Good morning from Suburban Jessup. Today's video is going to be on how to forge a solid rose from inch and three quarter solid gold rolled round bar. This uh, session will cover how to lay out and to cut the layers to form the petals for the rose. So let's get started. So the first thing we wanted to do is we wanted to make it so we weren't lugging this thing around, okay? So basically what we did was we took and we just cut a short piece. And this is actually yesterday's test piece, okay? Uh, I made some tooling yesterday to do this with and I wanted to test the tooling. So this is, this is the piece uh, that we had yesterday to test the tooling, but we've welded a piece of this is inch and three quarter round stock. We've welded a piece of half inch uh, square stock to it. Now, from our experiments yesterday, we're not quite straight here. So, I want, I'm going to have to cut that off and square that up. We want that end to be straight. And then I needed to make two chisel lines, a quarter inch apart from what's going to be the end of this bar. And, uh, Rather than take the time to put a wrap around on it and mark it and then you know cold chisel it, uh, hell, I'm lazy. I've told you that before. Uh, basically, I made my marks. The first mark is where I uh, uh, where I'm going to cut it off, square it up. The second mark is where we're going to do our first uh, uh, chisel cut, and the second mark is where we're going to do our second chisel cut. And basically, I did them with a with a pipe cutter, okay? You get a nice straight line. Uh, you can see it. Once you heat it up, you'll be able to see it. I've got, I got something that I can follow. Uh, just seemed to be like a good way to do it to me. Like I said, beats the hell out of putting a wrap around on it and, and, uh, and uh, taking a cold chisel around it. So, quick and easy, that's what we're after. Okay. So we've got our piece squared up, squared up real nice. Like I said, all I had to do was follow that line uh, that I had incised in there with the, uh, with the uh, pod cutter. Uh, so we've got our two other lines. Now I mentioned to you about the tools that I made yesterday uh, to do this project with. Uh, and I took a piece of a tube of two uh, 4140 square stock and uh, I put it in the forge, heated it up and I drove uh, the inch and three quarter pie or uh, inch and three quarter bar stock down into that to make us a saddle or a swedge more of a saddle than it is a swedge then I took a piece of, of a jackhammer bit and I forged me a hack uh, and then I uh, heated that up and I welded it to a piece of half inch round rod uh, you gotta heat it up before you weld on there if you just, if you just weld it on there without heating it up it'll break off uh, but that's a hack of, the third behind that is I'm gonna lay that in there once it gets hot I'm gonna come up here on this line here and we're going to hit it, roll it, hit it, roll it, hit it, roll it, hit it. And we're going to follow that line all the way around. We're going to go slow at first and make sure we stay in our, in our groove there. And then once we get our groove established, then we'll hit it harder. Okay? Like I said, I don't, uh, I don't have any strikers available. So we're going to do this under the KA75 power hammer. Uh, Maybe later on, uh, if this is successful, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get some strikers together and we'll do one with strikers. Because I would really like to do one with strikers. But uh, necessity is a mother of invention. Like I said, we're going to do this with a K75 and the tooling that we made. So let's get, uh, let's get down to the forging. Now, as we first start this, we want to go slow, we want to stay in that groove. We want to make sure that we don't hop out. 
and you can't see it and a little later on in the video you'll, uh, you'll see me adjusting it but uh, in order to feather those blows on that KA-75 I had to put a, uh, a ball valve on the exhaust port uh, to control the airflow coming out and that enabled me to be able to uh, limit the air and to get real good control of how fast that hammer dropped. Uh, that was uh, paramount to achieving this uh, so that we didn't cut it in half. But here we are, like I said, we're just working on uh, getting that first layer cut. slowly work that around. I'm hitting it fairly soft right now. Just trying to get that groove going. And that shows us the, where we're at now. Okay, now it's hard to see it here, but what you're looking at right now is I'm reaching down and I'm adjusting that ball valve that I had put onto the uh, exhaust port of the hammer. Uh, by doing that, it enabled me to control the airflow and to feather the blow of that hammer. Without the ball valve, it was hard to feather it with just the foot valve, and you took the risk of cutting piece in half. So it was really important to come up with a way to control that airflow to keep that hammer from dropping too fast and cutting that hammer. Uh, once we put the ball valve on there, it made an immense difference. Uh, I don't think the project could have been completed without that ball valve. Okay, so what you're watching now is we're uh, hitting it a little harder now and we're trying to get down within about a quarter inch of the center of that bar. Um, the main focus here is to not cut it in half. So when we get to a certain point, you'll see me reach down and uh, adjust that uh, ball valve on that exhaust and to soften the blow um, because the last thing we want to do is we don't want to cut this thing in half but that's our main focus so like I said here you'll see me adjusting that ball valve so that we get a softer blow um, it's really important and I can't overemphasize it you know, we don't cut this thing in half uh, so that's what we're trying to do now trying to uh, just get to this uh, within a quarter inch of the center. It's uh, looking pretty good, so now we'll move on to the second layer. Nice deep cut within a quarter inch, I would say, of the center of that bar. So here we're starting our second groove, uh, our second layer. We're taking it soft and we're making sure that we're in that 
uh, incised line that we did with the pipe cutter. Uh, and we're going to be careful going around as we go. Uh, we don't want to hop out of that groove. We want a nice even cut. So that's what we're focusing on right now. attention and you have to make sure you hold that hack straight that tether straight last thing you want that thing to do is to kick sideways on you So we've got our second groove started. Uh, we're pretty happy with it. We're at a point now we don't have to worry so much about the hack hopping out of the groove. So we're going to increase the air pressure again uh, so that it, uh, it cuts a little better, cuts a little deeper. Because uh, at this point we've got enough meat we don't have to worry about cutting it in half. Uh, a little later on we'll decrease the pressure again as we get closer to the center. Now we're going to increase the pressure so we can hit it a little harder. So what you're seeing us do now is the handle was getting uh, crooked and bent. So in order to uh, not have to fight that, uh, we went ahead and we put it in the vise and we straightened the handle back out. And then we cooled the handle so that it won't bend uh, when we start uh, working it again. So that's what we're doing right now. So we're uh, just about done with it. We're going to show you where we're at now. We've got both of our layers separated. That's not looking bad at all. Uh, I'm happy with it. So we're going to uh, take a moment and we're going to uh, adjust that air again. Uh, choke it off a little bit. Uh, we're getting closer to the center and the last thing we want to do at this point to cut that in half. So we just uh, we adjusted the air again on that uh, wall valve on the exhaust. That makes for a much smoother hit, a much softer blow. So we're pretty much done isolating our second uh, layer. We're going to examine it a little bit, check it out. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take it over to the power hammer and we're going to uh, 
isolate the third layer because we're going to have three layers but we isolate the third layer with the power hammer while creating the shoulder for the sepal and uh, the stem so that's what we're going to do now well that's about it for today i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did i'd appreciate it if you like it and share it with your friends uh, and we'll see you the next time uh, when we conclude how to make the rose uh, here at the Bourbon Jessup. So stay safe and bye.